Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. You know, flat earthers say the darndest things. The other day I heard a couple of real doozies and I thought that I would go over a few of them with you. The first one is that the moon is flat and the sun is flat because NASA refers to the moon and the sun as a lunar and a solar disk. Now, as you can tell from this image of the moon, which I'm taking with my telescope live as we speak, uh, the moon is more or less round or disc shape, but that is what a sphere will look like when you look at it from one direction. It'll always appear to be a round object, and as a result, it's very convenient for astronomers to talk about Gemaldi as being on the western edge of the lunar disk. Likewise, we describe the position of sunspots on the sun in terms of the solar disk. It does not mean that it is a pizza or a plate. But one thing that absolutely amazes me that seems to be making the rounds is that you can see stars through the moon. For example, this star right here is clearly in the shadowed portion of the moon, yet there it is. And if you get close to it, you may even notice it's shimmering. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get a little closer to it and see if we can figure out exactly what this is. All right. So once again, we've got darkness here, and then we have this little bright object. And there are several more of them, but that one is kind of set off of the Terminator line. Here's another one and another one here. What exactly is this object? Well, let's get a little closer and maybe have a better look at it. So there it is. Now, once again, there is darkness between the lit portion of the moon and the shadow portion of the moon and this bright object. Likewise, we see a couple of bright objects here, and there's another one right here that is in darkness, and it's just like a little island of light. Well, what exactly is this? Let's go ahead, and without changing anything else, let's move the gain up a little bit. So as we bring this gain up some, we start to see a little bit more here. Notice that this is completely connected all the way around, and it is a rim of light with a dark center, very much like this rim of light with a dark center and this one, and this one, and these. Now, the thing that you may want to notice about these smaller craters right here is that you have a crescent of shadow, and the other side of the crater, the rim, is in sunlight because the sun is in that general direction. Now, if we bring this back down, we can see that rather clearly. So we'll bring it from 306 back down to 102, and see. So, once again, here is the effect that we're seeing. So we have a dark shadow on the sunward side, and then we have the rim of the crater is lit up here. This is the rim of a crater. Now, sometimes these will be mountains as well, little mountain peaks out here. Like, for example, that may be a little mountain peak. But many times they're actually just the rim of a crater and sunlight is getting in there and lighting up that entire wall. Likewise, this one down here, if we bring our gain up again, we can get a little closer look at that. And once again, we're seeing structure here. That may be a little mountain, as is this a little mountain right here. This is simply the rim of a crater. But once again, if we bring the gain back down to normal, it almost looks like there's just simply a lit area there, and that is what they are calling a star. Now, another interesting thing that we can do is so let's move the moon over here to the far corner. Let's bring it down to about, oh, right there or so. Now, let's start turning up the gain and see what happens. If 
right there. Now, let's adjust this a little. Look right here. If you look very carefully, you can see the dark portion of the moon. Now, this is thrown off a little bit because this is so bright. But if we move this over a little bit, now, when we increase the exposure time, look what happens to the rest of the moon. You can really quite easily see that. Now if we move it over to the side here a little bit and we'll bring this exposure up a little bit more. Let's see what happens. We went from a one second exposure to a four second exposure and when we do that we can very clearly see the portions of the moon that are currently in shadow. As a matter of fact if you look carefully there's the Sea of Crisis right there. Notice this large round dark area. Here's the Sea of Fertility and the Sea of Tranquility is right there. But you can very clearly see them. They're just much darker than the sunlit portions. Those are stars. Notice you don't see any stars behind the lit portion of the moon. All you see is the rim of the craters, maybe a mountain peak here and there. These are mountain peaks. But you can very clearly see the moon is here, and these are just mountain peaks. Now one other thing that we might want to do is we may want to take some measurements. So what I've done is I've put up the crosshairs onto the image of the moon, and as you can see, this outer circle pretty much follows the rim of the moon. Well, let's see, up a little bit, there we go. That looks pretty good. Now, the shadow portion of the moon should continue along here. Let's go ahead and change our exposure time and see what happens. Well, will you look at that? There is the edge of the moon. Now notice it's not, it's not perfectly lined up. We could maybe get it a little bit better like that. Notice that the glare of the moon extends well beyond the actual rim of the moon, which is behind this circle right here. But that follows right along. Now, the last thing is, is the moon moving and is it in orbit? Well, let's go ahead and have a quick look. So here we are. We know that this portion of the moon is present, but it's currently in shadow, so we don't see it in a normal view. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is right down here. Notice this crescent. This means that we are doing a lunar tracking rate, and as a result, the moon is staying right in the crosshairs. Okay, so what happens if we change this to the sidereal tracking rate from the lunar tracking rate? And notice the solar tracking rate is different as well. Now if we go back here to the lunar tracking rate, notice that the moon stays right in the target. That's not a star shining through the moon, that's the rim of a crater. We also have some mountaintops that have illumination from the oblique sun. Notice the shading in the craters. We have a side with shadow, which is towards the sun, and then we have a side that's fully sunlit on the opposite side of the crater from the sun. To some deeper craters in the moon, you'll see that effect very clearly, this three-dimensional effect of a scooped out crater. The side towards the sun is in shadow, the side opposite the sun is sunlit, and that happens in both. How about a mountain? The face of the mountain towards the sun 
is sunlit and there is a shadow behind it. You know, flat earthers like to talk about their P900s and their P1000s. You can easily get these views of the moon, the P900 or P1000. You can change the contrast or the exposure length. Make sure you put it on a tripod. And you can very clearly identify these bright objects as rims of craters or mountaintops. And there's certainly no reason to confuse them for stars. You can also take a longer exposure and very clearly see the shaded portion of the moon. Notice all of the glare that you get, which is much larger than the moon itself, but it's still exactly the right size and shape. So, looks like we're getting a few clouds in, so we're going to go ahead and shut down. Thank you very much for joining me, and remember, flat earthers say the darndest things.